Um, I wanted to say that what I'm just going to do a brief, brief, my own thing. And so, Marsha, you can start recording. I am. <laughs> oh, it doesn't say recording on mine, so I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, it says, oh, I have to look on the participants list. I forgot. That's where it tells that it's being recording up by your name. All right. Um, I suggest you paint, you know, we've talked about doing your, laying out your plan and, and all that. So you've got your plan all done. You've got your uh, sculptor mold or your paper clay or your whatever on your base. And you've drawn, I assume, areas where you want grass or dirt or you've built up your mounds and done all that. So now you just paint those areas as a base before you start adding uh, ground covers. Like I would, for grass, some people like to paint it green underneath so it looks really green when they put the grass on. Other people prefer to paint it brown so it looks like dirt because grass has dirt under it. Um, what I do is I kind of smush green and brown all over so it's some of it's green, some of it's brown because really that's how my lawn looks. <laughs> some of it's green, some of it's brown underneath. And um, so then you need, when that's dry, you need to put a good fine coating. I use mostly train uh, landscape foam. I have a lot of different brands and things of it. And I use um, a powdery kind of stuff they call turf. They have fine turf, they have medium turf, there's all kinds of chunky turf, uh, you know, whatever. So I paint a thin layer uh, or a layer of glue, white glue over it. And I mix it with a little water. So it's sort of thin, but not too thin, but you don't want it really chunky, you know, like straight taffy is a little thick. So I water it down a little and paint it all over the surface. Then I pile the foam, which here's some of my foam in this thing. I don't want to take it out, but I'm assuming you, most of you know what train foam is. Uh, you can find it in train stores. You can find it online. I think they sell some of it on um, Micromark, um, other places. As we go through the evening, people will say their sources of where they get things. I have a lot of AMSI stuff, but I don't even know if AMSI is still in business. I have stuff that is probably 30, 40 years old even. So, uh, but anyway, so I just pile it on. I might put it on a quarter of an inch thick onto that glue and then set it aside and I leave it where there's no breeze. You don't want anybody blowing on it because <laughs> that'll be a mess. Set it aside for an hour or two so the glue can dry. And then you can take and shake it off onto some wax paper because then whatever shakes off, you can put back in your bag and use again. And uh, it should have a nice coating of that grass. Now, if you want dirt, I use different kinds of dirt from train companies, but there's a lot of things you can use for dirt. Uh, and I apply it the same way with the glue and all that. But if you're putting dirt next to the green, finish with your, your dirt or your green, get it all dried and shaken off, and then do the next section. Don't try to do it all at one time or it's all going to run into each other and stick to each other. Um, it's, it's, pretty, it's fairly easy to do. Um, to put dirt and, and grass down. Now there's a lot of other ground covers. You can use mm -hmm. gravel, there's gravelly. If you look on a site where they have the different train, the different, what do you call them? Uh, uh, dirt. Train stuff. layout. Train layout stuff, yes, thank you. If you look on, a, on the sites with the train layout stuff, you'll find gravel, you'll find 
um, dirt that is uh, more coarse. You'll find fine turf, fine dirt. You'll find all kinds. So you, you can just play around with it or you could mix things into it. I have here, um, Oh, I had a board I was going to show you. I'll find it in a minute. Hold on. on the um, MCC Groups IO files under landscaping, uh, ground coverings, there's some sites to check out like Woodland Scenics and, and a list of links to sites. And there's one that's really interesting, getting to that later when Barbara gets through. I have one board here, it's not beautiful, but can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I've done here is I marked off a section, Oops, I, you know, everything's backwards here on the screen. So over here, I put in a gravelly, um, mix because I'm going to put a, that's where the workbench is going. This is actually the plan we used for uh, Portland. If anybody did that, uh, that yard we did in the, at, not Portland, the Seattle house party last a uh, few years ago. And then this circle here is going to be a dirt area. I put dirt on it and then I put some uh, lighter brown kind of gravelly stuff uh, there. And then the rest of it's painted green and it's got green turf all over it, green grass. So that is how it's gonna look when you're at this stage, you know? Now, what I am, what I would wanna do, I think if I, cause I've already done one of these. So this is another sample I had there, but I would probably want to build up this circle and make it a little mound this time. When we did this workshop in Seattle, uh, we were putting a um, fountain in there. So it needed to be kind of flat. And then we put plants around the fountain. And then we had a fence where that white, oops, excuse me, where, the, where this white line is, uh, we put a fence. Oh my gosh, I can't do backwards like this. <laughs> Why? Oh, I feel like I'm blind. Anyway, we put a fence there and then behind the fence, we, we put a little a workbench and a little potting area. So this is one of those plans like we talked about a couple, was it last month or the month before? I can't remember. Anyway, this is a plan and this is kind of the basics of one of them. Uh, uh, is that the, uh, the workshop that, uh, what was it? A Saturday morning workshop <laughs> from Seattle? workshop we did in Seattle yes yeah I have mine over here I don't have everything on it but if you would like I can bring that over and show it yes you sure. should show it definitely everybody should share these things here's another one from the same thing where I glued on a stone patio where we glued on a stone patio and uh and you can uh and that's plastic and then you can dry brush it to have different shapes and colors, so it's still the same plan, but a little bit different. Barbara, here, that grass. grass. So I put grass here, and I've got dirt in the brown areas. Barbara, that gravel on the other one looks kind of like kitty litter. <laughs> it does. Well, you could probably use kitty litter, but it's. I not. mean, it, it's the yeah. Uh, yeah, because it, it does. You know, it's much finer than. I will tell you, it's smaller than kitty litter. <laughs> Even the clump over. Uh, Either the clumping one that that's pretty fine. They're pretty little. Yeah. For one inch, it would be. Oh, the fine. It might be good for one. This it was a one inch project. Did you find that? Who was that, Shirley? Shirley. Yeah. Yeah, I have it here. Let me turn the light on. And so. Okay. Let me grab my camera and give you guys a little tour. My grandson was intrigued with the fountain. And he was, uh, I don't know what, about two years old. He looked oh, at the yeah. fountain. He said, peeing. <laughs> yes, I know. This fountain was a, um, a souvenir at the house, at the convention. Oh, yeah. Yep. And there's the hosta plants that we did from the, the class. 
Mm -hmm. We did hosta plants. Oh, there, she's got that patio in there. Oh, neat. Yep. Um, and we had a bench here uh, with a back. So he, the planter came from, from that convention. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, that was too, the, the tall planter with the hanging basket. Yep. And, and then there's the bench. The bench. You didn't do the back of the bench. We had a, it had a door on the back of it too. Yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't put that on. I wanted it. It was, it was there for putting vines and things on. But we had this. And we had this, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And these hosta plants are from that class. That was from, the, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Those were kits. Were those kits from? Um, I forgot who provided those hosta plants. If we but they're beautiful, them. but they were they turned out beautifully. Yeah, it was a great landscaping class. There, there we kind of got an overall view there of it. Go. Yeah. So and we learned how to make the roses on the trellis. Right. The hostas roses were very like those from Z and K. Mm-hmm. Now on mine, you know where I showed you that white line that I couldn't find with my finger? Uh, I turned my trellis sideways so it wasn't so high. And I had my rose bushes growing against it lower down. Um, so she's got a different arrangement than some did. I mean, and people did different things than do that it's kind of fun. That's why I'd like to see us do it as a kind of a workshop, but I'm still looking at June or more because I think this never was project needs to get past us because so many are are involved with it. Um, oops. Okay, I told him once, but on the MCC groups IO files under landscaping ground coverings, and there's there will be a, a a topic. Each topic will have its own heading. What in the files? There. Uh, it was sent to me by Jen, uh, something Jones, and I'm sorry, I can't. Jen remember. Price Jones. Yes. Jen Price Jones <laughs> right. from Canada, yeah. Where um, they've taken natural leaves, real leaves, and scrunched them up in a blender, like, you know, dried leaves in the fall, and scrunched them up in a blender, and then one of them was done with water, another one was just dry. But anyway, then the ones in water, of course, had to be strained and dried. And the other thing is with natural organic items that you use in scenes and all, they need to be debugged yeah. in an oven. And I've been trying to look for an exact deal for um, microwave but i haven't come up with too much but the oven is mostly what they recommend and just on a you know, tin foil on a on a cookie sheet and the material on it and um about 200 to 250 degrees for 30 40 minutes and watched so that it doesn't burn or anything you want to do that before you put them through your blender it would be a good idea, right. yes. Good idea. Uh, what I what I would uh, I do is I like you could use instead of train foam dirt or something like that, you can use real dirt, but you've got to debug it. And so putting it through your microwave or your oven, bake it a while. I, I don't know what the exact times are, but um, that's what I would do. And then you can, uh, you know, strain it so that um, it's fine uh, for miniatures, and you don't have chunks of clumps in there. And and so you you certainly can. And I don't use a blender so much with mine. I have an extra. It's a dedicated for miniatures only. <laughs> um, coffee grinder that I put things into to grind them up like that. So. But some people have a dedicated blender for it too. So it is a way to chop, you know, get things very fine. But I think that idea of chopping up the leaves is cool if you can maintain the color. I, I concerned about, I, I don't know, I haven't baked uh, 
like fall leaves or something to see if they maintain their color. I would think they might lose their color in the oven and a microwave might be. I don't know about lo lo losing color from the, um, the oven, but um, anything that's exposed to any kind of light that's natural is going to fade. Well, yes. time. And that's true. And after your thing is done, it's good always to spray it all with a matte spray to help retain color. You can use tea leaves and coffee ground, grounds as well. Coffee I, grounds, yes, is really good too. Really it smells good. nice too. <laughs> tea leaves. Yeah. Use tea do, leaves. Do you have to bake the uh, tea leaves in the coffee grounds too? You like use the boiling water so it sterilizes them anyway. Right. Oh, okay. But you want to grind them up very fine. No, I don't. Used. Used co coffee grounds. Uh, used ones. I, I find some um, some of my coffee grounds are too are not fine enough for me. But it yes, depends well, on what your uh, what your thing is that you want to do and what your look is. You know, espresso coffee, coffee is fine. Use instant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, instant would be really easy. No, yes, that's very fine. It appears no, but it's one grade further on than the uh, ground. One of the problems with Vine scatter from the railroad companies is that they come in such large containers. There are a few companies that you can order from where you just get a little package. One of, those, one of those is Petite Properties. They have one of yeah. the widest I go to ranges and nicest scatters that I found. Yeah. I go to train fairs as well, and they will, the individual stall holders have obviously bought in bulk, but they've divided it up into manageable amounts. Well, Woodland Scenics, I don't know if they're in business anymore, and Anne's oh, yeah. knows, yeah. there are small yeah. packages you can buy in the... Yeah, this buy. says 21.6 inches, yeah, I don't little, know what that, that means, packets. but... <laughs> so you don't yeah. have to buy those giant containers, no. it, but... Yes, so look on around. Chain yeah, that's just what I'm saying. You have to look around to find the smaller packages. Try a train exhibition. Uh, I'm just showing you. You there. see this box? This yep. is like 12 by 12 box. It is full of just green foams. I've been over the years. I can't Mine's tell you how much I've thrown out. <laughs> that's all small packets, but I have so much landscaping materials that I could probably landscape a thousand houses. <laughs> so could I. Oh God. My and, box is twice that size, but it's got a mix of everything in it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I, I just moved, you know, because I moved last year, I got rid of more than half of my landscaping stuff that I had been saving. Probably regretted after. It's a very years. color you want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, now pared down but this is more than a person needs especially if you're working in small scales but <coughs> it does. you forget how long it lasts don't you when yeah. you're you know i mean a lot of things you don't do much landscaping on or just a little bit of greenery here and there so hmm. so any other uh, ground cover issue yeah. Barb, with yeah. your uh train powdery stuff um my ex used to blend like two or three different colors so you have yes variation and put it in a uh, like a shaker bottle from spices and that's so a nice go, way to store it yes yeah and i will i do mix i do mix a couple of colors at least because no grass is that easy. i used to buy flocking and used to keep the colors very separate and i didn't always have the color i wanted but i found flocking you could mix the colors together with that put them in a shaker and shake them and create your own colors from it. I know it may it works really well to just make your own colors and if you want to, you know, and yeah, absolutely. I have a question. Um, what about sand? Ah, sand, yes. Or beach. It's a tricky one. Um, Personally, I don't recommend going to the beach and collecting sand. I think it's too coarse for miniatures. Again, if you do that and want to use it, you better bake it or something to get any little things out of it. 
If it's got right. salt, you want to wash it first because it yeah. can corrode. Right. I I use uh, what I use for sand is what do you call it? You know how they do sand art, where they put right. layers of colored sand. Right. Yeah. And all that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So <laughs> I look at crafting places that have sand art sand because it's very fine and works really well for miniatures for me. And it's clean. Mm -hmm. And it's clean, and it you can get it in any color imaginable. I mean, I don't know that if you're doing a beach, I don't think you want purple sand, but you <laughs> could get it if you want it. <laughs> and um, for Halloween, you couldn't but you could get Halloween. a couple colors, couple colors, and mix them, you know, so it doesn't look too yeah. sterile, like it's all one. But I, and yeah. do you use the thinned out glue? And then sprinkle the sand on it. That's what I do. Yeah. Embossing powder makes a nice sand. What does? Good. Embossing, Embossing powder, powder. For scrapbooking. Just don't heat it. That's a good idea. If you don't heat it and melt it, it would make a nice sand. Yeah. I didn't hear that, Shirley. Use embossing powder for scrapbooking. But oh. don't heat it because yeah. it melts. It would melt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beware, though, if you're using a heat gun to shrink plastic, you like. Yeah, well, uh, also, would that be finer than the sand? Yeah, not, not really much. Oh, okay. Not very much. Well, you don't want it too powerful. But mine's a quarter some... inch one, and, yeah. and so I need it to be pretty fine. You need yeah, some... that other, yeah, I mostly yeah. do quarter inch, and I find that, that uh, crafting sand to be very, just fine for that. Um, also, I in have ground areas of grass. I I don't paint it green. I paint it. My my dirt is brown. In my yard, the dirt is brown. It's not green. Right. And That's... and then if it when I put the flocking on for the grass, if there's a a a patch that doesn't completely cover, it looks natural. Uh -huh. And there and there are it looks patches. like my yard. Yeah. And in yeah. the south, you want to paint it orange. <laughs> <laughs> they the have is orange. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's orange. Ask the ones who are in Georgia. Yeah. In Australia, some places it's red, redder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, this is red probably a reddish. That's um, that's clay. <laughs> it's clay. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what, what it is. About clay. It, yeah. Uh huh. Mix in it. Well, we have red dirt here too, but when people are putting in lawns, pretty much they bring in topsoil. Yes. Yeah. Regular brown. My topsoil is brown. Yeah. And, and if you have a dog, you have yellow spots. Yeah. 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 You could make those. Uh, my my yeah. niece and nephew yeah. were born in, in natural. Um, well, my niece and nephew were born in Indiana and they moved to Arkansas. And a few years later, they were up here and we were driving from Kendallville to Fort Wayne and there was black dirt. And my nephew said, the dirt is so black. <laughs> he was yeah. used to the orange dirt. A neighbor across, across, a neighbor the, across the road had some sand. They were having paving stones laid and the sand was to go between them. And I was talking to my friend and her little girl was there. She's only tiny, she's about three. And she disappeared for a minute. I mean, we're, we were in a cul-de-sac. There's no traffic or anything, so it didn't matter. And she just ran across the road and she'd gone to this dirt, a pile of sand because she had spotted the tiniest little perfect shells in it. And she was sitting on this pile of sand, taking all the shells and came back and gave, us to, gave them to us. Oh, and we, had so so much. we pretended we didn't notice her and sent her back again. And she sorted all these little tiny shells out. <laughs> Here's the Skinner. That I Are you the one that put the note about the grass? Yeah, um, I I haven't done very much landscaping yet, um, but I, I like do things from scratch as much as possible. And I made sand. I made grass um, from sawdust and just painted it. And so I've got grass on top of this hill. Okay, that's kind of, that's an interesting look to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Beautiful. It, it kind of, it, it gives kind of a rustic, you know, right. grass. 
it's for, so for my my did beach. You, did you grind up the sawdust or was it just straight out of the saw? Um, I use saw I use sawdust and then I, I um, sifted it. it. Yeah. yeah well, so that, that I could have you know the finest particles. That would and then and then painted it. Cool. That you can buy it commercially dyed, but it's cool, so you'd have to run it through a sieve as well. Yeah, for the small scales. Just... Did you glue it on first and then paint it? No, I painted it. I painted it. I sifted it. I painted it and laid it out to dry. And then okay. after it dried, I kind of broke it up a little bit more yeah. and sifted it again. Oh, okay. So it'd be very fine. Yeah. Laura, was that... But from, you know, cutting wood and stuff. Laura, was that you, Susan. that you were holding up? It was from Hobby Lobby. And that is, was in the craft area. The It was actually with the train miniatures. Oh, okay. And they, they sell quite a, a number of different color sands. Yes. Yeah. They do. There's a wealth of things out there when we ever can get out to look at them <laughs> without feeling guilty. <laughs> I've had such good luck with, with different kinds of tea and um, for bark dust in miniatures, but of course I'm 112. Uh, I'm yeah. not, you'd a have to of, grind it up yeah. again. Right. But the different, you know, like if I mix Earl Grey tea in with, Lipton's tea, which I often drink, um, I can make it a really pretty color, and I've been oh. very happy with that. So you different, and I found the colors. And I always, I'm so thrifty that I use them once they're used. The oh. tea bags are used. I think that also changes the color. I think it makes the color more interesting. Yeah, you have to use so, it first. You wouldn't want to waste tea on same a minute. <laughs> thing. Just throw it on a let it dry. But I found the most wonderful crushed marble. Um, and it was in the landscaping department of Lowe's, and it was a nice big cylinder of this what? crushed marble, and it made the most beautiful path. In a very formal garden, I was making a French garden, you know, where everything's very square and precise. And so um, it was very the, finely crushed. It was. Oh, Plus, you can hit it with you can hit it with a hammer. Right. If you oh, want it smaller, yes. crush it even more. Oh, what that's a what good I did. Yeah, crushed marble. That would be a lovely. Thing it was just. Do. It was just gorgeous. It was a commission piece that I was doing and the people were very happy. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And I, I cut, yeah, I cut the shrubs from the um, landscaping foam. Right. Um, you know, so just like trimming a hedge, you know, very carefully formed them. But I also did a lot of work with, um, the stuff that you stick your flowers in when you want the arrangement to stay very precise. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right. right. Floral, floral, floral foam. foam. For, yeah. For, we've talked about using yeah. that for a lot of things. Yeah, I like it because it's very fine foam. It's not. Yeah, very easy to. <laughs> yeah. One will break up quite a bit. One for the wet flowers will break up. You want to use the dry one. Oh, okay. Yeah, Oasis powders up the water, the one that the wet flowers what well, crumbles. Yeah. Um, but the dry foam one, the one for uh, um, dried arrangements, that does last. Mm -hmm. But it's a brown. Oh, I didn't. Color. I hope then that the shrubs, I. It'll be all right. If it's not. Yeah, moved, I hope that um, if it's not this moved, if it's glued down, it'll be fine. It's only if it's anything that you use a lot, it will break oh, up. Oh, good. I, I once saw oh. a landscape that was, it was very interesting. And when I asked the person what it was, because I never saw it before, he told me it was crushed walnuts. 
yeah, mm. there's a lot of coconut, um, coconut fiber cut up as well is, it's, is used quite a bit. I've heard of using crushed uh, nuts and things. Coconut fiber is an interesting thing. That would make some nice grasses and things, uh, taller grasses. And that kind of thing you can, you know, if you want weeds in your lawn or something, you can get little uh, grasses from the train store too that you can make little bunches and stick them in here and there. As, Weed. The uh, train um, products that are like ballast, that are brown, yeah. uh, they come from shells. Do yeah. they? Oh, okay. Okay. That's yeah, like pecans and walnuts, um, maybe even hickory, I don't know. I, I, I know specifically pecans is one of them that they use. The pet department, um, go to a big pet store and you can find all kinds of products. Um, they have the the, the crushed walnuts and stuff for litter. Uh, bird gravel makes a nice uh, uh, crushed stone. Aquarium, oh, aquarium yeah. stuff as well is I, very good. I looked earlier today. I have I bought this before we moved up here. It came in a big bag. It's called Sani Chips. S A N I dash C H I P S. Uh, I found it on Amazon. It's called Josh's. Frogs Santa Chips, 10 quarts is $14.99. Uh, Lab Supply and PJ Murphy also sell it. But this is what it is. And you can see by my fingers here how small this stuff is. Uh, it wouldn't work for quarter scale. I think it would be too big. But uh, for one inch, it's great mulch. Great mulch. And um, yeah, check out your, your different litter products for lizards and birds and whatever. Um, Aquarium bits as well. This yeah, and for grass, uh, these are just a couple of sample pieces of, of carpeting that I've uh, picked up at um, uh, Menards. This one is almost like a fuzzy felt. It's very dark in here, so you can't see, but um, it's maybe not quite a quarter inch thick and it almost looks more like flocking. Mm. Um, now it, it's all gruesome green when you look at it, <laughs> uh, but take paint and just splash paint around on it, uh, like dry brush it, use it uh, like a, a, a sand color and a little bit of a brown or maybe a little lighter green and just kind of uh, go all over it. This is another grass product that they had. This one is really thick. Mm. Um, this one is quite thick, but I think you could trim it down. And this is really grass. Would the layers pull apart? Could you pull it apart in layers? Clean it out that way. What's that, Rusty? Could you pull it apart and thin it out that way? Uh, no, because this is... You can see it's all... Um. Yeah, it's, it's interwoven, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's indoor, well, outdoor carpet. I think you could uh, take scissors and trim it down. Yeah. Uh, go to the Menards or someplace and get a sample piece to try it. And then the other <laughs> one is the standard indoor, outdoor carpeting. And mm -hmm. if you turn it different directions, it takes on different color. Mm -hmm. In one direction, it's really dark. One direction, it's quite light. Once again, you put paint on it and um, tone it down. And watch which way it is. It's got a lot of shine on it, so you have to tone it down. Tone it down. Oh, that's got a packing, is it? That one. Yeah, and um, yeah. I've also used clumping kitty litter, but you, nowadays most of them seem to have those blue thingies in them. So you <laughs> got to watch and make sure you get cheap stuff. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the blue stuff in it. From the dollar store. Nice gravel pathway, and uh, of course sandpaper. You could uh, paint that. And it would make yeah. a nice pathway too. Huh? Hmm. Okay, Preble has some things to show. Yep. Okay, so um, I'm going to do um, a couple of demonstrations. One for anyone who's not familiar with paper mache. Um, and the reason why I want to show this as a ground cover is because, um, so I'm going to tilt it down where you can see my desk here. 
you don't need to see that. So I have this cup. I've put some, the. I've already wet it. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah. And you see how it's kind of. I don't know. It, it may look wet, but anyways, the, the reason why I want to show it, I'll, I'll, I'll after I demonstrate it. You, the thing about this is, you don't want it too wet. Um, and it's very easy to get it too wet, or you just have to add more. Um, but if your your base, you get it too wet, then your base will warp even um, this. Um, what is it? Paper mache or cellulose clay. Oh, okay. All right. And you can go as thick or as thin as you want. I particularly like to do thin if I'm like filling in a gap or something. And I did that recently on something, which is why Marsha wanted me to show this. But anyways, I mean, you can just smush it to your heart's desire. And, you know, and I think it looks like stone when it's dry, um, especially if you kind of leave it rough, uh, which you can kind of play with it. Um, uh, but I'll, here I'll show you where I have used it. You can add a little white glue with it too, and it'll make it stick and, and be more useful. Let me lift this up a little bit. Egg cartons, that's that's what yeah. I would use always. Chop them up and soak them. So uh, what I've done is um, I've put it under here on the side. It's kind of covered with the green, but I mean, it's, it, it is paper mache, but also added on top of um, the, um, the steps um, and to give them a rough look. Um, and then down here as well, you can see it's um, also added. I know that's probably, maybe that looks better. Yeah. That's a lovely little scene. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, a child's teacup. And then the other one I was going to demonstrate really quickly is um, using the um, um, these uh, what stencils. Oh, okay. Now it is recommended that you use some sort of spray adhesive, but um, if you have a um, like I have a a the side of a board, which I'll grab it real quick and show you. Um, can you see that? Mm. This yeah. is the edge. And so I've been very slowly working around, you know, I'm still trying to yeah. finish this, okay? Um, but anyways, I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm doing this. Um, and of course you would wanna paint beforehand whatever your um, your color is for your grout. But what I'm literally doing is I'm just taking this and putting a little bit on at a time. And then I'm using a spatula and just kind of pressing it into the... What is that you're putting on it? I'm actually using wood filler, but it could be spackle. It could be, um, you know, an, any kind of liquidy kind of... Um, the reason why I'm using wood filler, it was handy and I'm just, you know, I've been, <laughs> I've been, I'm, you know, whatever I want to use. Um, anyways, okay, so I fill it in and I'm holding this down. So that's why the, the adhesive is better because you don't have to hold it down, um, which has been real tricky when I have to scoot along. Anyways, and then you just pull this away real quickly now it looks, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of, it's globbed okay. up in some spots. So I can leave it like that and then just sand it off after it dries. Or I can take um, like a knife or in this case, I have a dental tool and I can just scrape away a little bit of it. And with the brick, um, I was having problems with it kind of bleeding over. And so I just go back with my dental tool in between and scrape it so that's that's um stencil you know the spray, ahead, the spray adhesive stops that a lot of that from happening yeah yeah because even with holds, the spray adhesive it, it, it could still stencil, happen yeah the itty -bitty pieces of the stencil down so that it doesn't bleed through right mm -hmm. that that and there's the um the person i got it from uh does recommend you know there's two different ways you can do it 
um, using the spray adhesive and, um, but I, I just, I don't have any spray adhesive, <laughs> so I haven't been using it. Um, but anyways, the other thing I wanted to show is um, this uh, one. If you yeah, wanted yeah. a path, you could probably put tape on the, where, where the, beside where the yeah. path is going to be, couldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this other one I wanted to show because this is paper mache inside and I've smoothed it out. Uh, like what Barbara was saying, some people like it to be green. I, that's generally what I've done. But I also painted this brown and this is a, a ballast type product. Can you, I don't know, it doesn't look, I don't know if it's too bright. Anyways, um, but the other thing I wanted to show is that this is eggshells. Can you see that? Oh, okay. Now, yeah. eggshells look really neat, but they are a pain because eggshells are curved and you're putting it on a flat surface. So it, it, it looks wonderful, um, but just understand that you're going to have to piece a lot together and you're not going to get a whole sheet like effect um, and uh, paint it beforehand before you put it down and it'll look it'll look beautiful. I didn't do that. I had to blob it on. But anyway, so that's my I've seen crushed oyster shells in an aquarium shop as well for the um, oh. sea, sea aquariums, but they have crushed oyster shells and that has a very similar effect. One one time I went to a show in Denver and one of the clubs had done eggshell. They either did a fence with the eggshell being the fence, or they did a patio with the eggshells. And they, some of them used brown and some of them used white. I think the brown ones were prettier, but you know when they use white, they used a different color of grouting material, I guess. I don't. I, I've always saved my brown eggshells, so <laughs> right now my kids have chickens and they all have, well, they have, some of them have green and blue eggshells, so I've been saving those too. Haven't come up with an idea yet, but um, <laughs> I figured out what to use as, as like the grouting material to put them in. So For some of those people here that, um, are not familiar with the stencils and where Purple got them. They were sold on the name site as a um, round table. They're five dollars a piece. They're sold in in every scale. And where you want to go is um, Mini Minutia. Yeah, she also has an um, Etsy shop, at which um, is yes, where I purchased she has it. an Etsy shop. Yeah. Um, there was a company that's... over here selling them about 10 years ago, um, very similar to those, and it was called the London Brick Company, the Bromley Brick Company. She but... has she has three different designs. Mm -hmm. that you she can... also has YouTube videos to show how to do it. Yes. And they're under her name, Christina. I forget her last name now, but McDonald's. you can Google it. Tina, Tina it, it, McDonald is Tina many. McDonald, yeah. McDonald, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah she, um, she's the one that's producing the, uh, the stencils now. Is it? <laughs> Well, girls, I've enjoyed this, and uh, thank you very much. Oh, one. Hi, Rusty. I know, it's one o'clock for you. you can't one go in the morning. Good night, Rusty. 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 It's down there. Oh, he hasn't got his glasses on. Sorry, <laughs> girls. Oh, the joys of getting yeah. younger, I would. There you go, darling. Well, Marcia, this is going to be recorded, right?
Yes, it yeah. is being recorded. Thank you. Yeah, because I just got on. My internet was down, so. Mm. They switched you off for me. Said you weren't <laughs> trustworthy anymore. You haven't got a proper line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave me. There she is. She has a lot of trouble with her eyes, so. Yeah. She's almost totally blind. Yes. And she does amazing work. Okay, yeah, anyone else have some something to show? With her favorite tools are her fingers. Yeah. Just like me. I have some things here I can show. Good. Yeah. I have to reverse my camera to show you. Are the people being spotlighted? No. Oh. Hmm. Yes. Well, I think I'm we just have spotlight for well, everyone. Recording, I'm having trouble um, uh, pinning their videos. Can you see this? Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. hmm. This is uh, mm. actual clay tiles I made for my garden shed. And uh, I actually rolled out the clay myself from terracotta clay and made the tiles from that. I used a board, I can get this. It's just a VCT tile. So one of these boards like this, mm. but I mounted a piece of wood around it and glued around it. So it's only an eighth of an inch high, the wood. Oh yeah. And then I use, I use a really wide roller and roll the clay out and then cut it to size using that and so that are was are they just quarter of an inch big each one well this is one inch scale oh so uh, they're an inch so this was yeah so these are one inch square oh yeah so it turned out really good so i'll put a bit of ground there and and the dog digging its way to china um like i say but I, the grass is just a regular um rolled grass i haven't done a lot with that now but that was the first time I did anything with clay. So it turned out fairly good. Yeah. The other did one I did is in my, pardon? Did you dry brush the tile at certain places to get the different coloring? Exactly, yeah. I used some white and some, just some pastels on it before I glued them in. And then once I grouted it, I added some, um, some of the green just to make it look like, you know, grass is growing up through it. Right. <laughs> Looks good. The other one I did was for my bakery. This was probably the first thing I um, I did outside of a house as such. And this is all made from egg cartons. Oh, you cut them all, so huh? I, well, I cut them all, but then I also glued a sheet of graph paper on the diagonal down first. And then I lay the um, bricks, egg carton bricks on the diagonal following the graph paper. And even the stones oh. and the step that are there. That's all egg cartons. Same down here. Actually, the siding on the on the bakery itself is egg carton as well. But oh. all the stones yeah. are all egg cartons. You could just use the flat part of the egg carton then? Oh, yeah. I did everything. The stones, for the most part, are uh, like the cup parts of the egg cartons. Mm. And they're, you know, you just kind of flatten them out a little bit. But you kind of get that curve to them, right? So oh, I yeah. did that. Do you use only the cardboard ones? Because all we yeah. get here is styrofoam a card. Yeah, no, I use just all we get here basically is the cardboard ones still. The other project again with egg carton is I just did a, a cobblestone street uh, on street scene, which is just a bunch of uh, storefronts together. What are and you using? Again, what are you using to color your bricks and stones so that they're different colors? Uh, just usually it's some pastels, uh, some powders, and sometimes some very diluted uh, paint just to give it, um, you know, a, yeah, I've, uh, used, some... I've used uh, watercolors and I've also used chalk. And then yeah. after you use the chalk, you spray with a fixative and it turns it a different color. Yeah. Oh, you have to spray the chalk though, huh? Yeah. When you use like chalk, I say, I find yeah, the egg yeah, cartons. Yeah. So I have a lifetime supply of egg cartons if anybody needs any. I keep giving them away to a local farmer when I get too many, but <laughs> I, I save every egg carton because well, even the uh, the um, slate on this uh, bookstore is the cartons as well. So uh, I use egg wow. carton a lot because I find it's 
you know, relatively inexpensive to use, right? Oh, I, I love well, it as a material for, for building. Yeah. Well, that's the, uh, everything I say has just been basically egg cartons or clay that I've used. Very good, Wanda. Thank you. Yeah, I like that patio. Mm -hmm. the, the red brick out in front that. The herringbone. Uh, interesting, it's the wonderful. patio. I use Pinterest a lot for um, um, for finding ideas, and I have my mm -hmm. own stuff on there. And that um, patio is the um, number one pinned item on my entire Pinterest page. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's, that's What's your Pinterest page? Wanda what? Uh, just try Wanda Waterfield. Waterfield? Yeah. If not, try my blog name, which was so many, M-I-N-I, -I, projects. Either one of them should get you to the Pinterest page. There's over 60,000 pins on it. Wow. And there's also 10,000 followers on it, which is even, uh -huh. I don't know where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> You probably gained a few more today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the stone itself actually came from Newfoundland uh, stone. These are, um, hold them up now, I just got the camera this way. This is actually Newfoundland slate. And this stuff sli uh, can slither and slim down to little tiny pieces. This small, like you see it's so thin. Mm. and uh, they use it to build houses with here back in the sound so that, well, that's why i use on the walls for most of the stuff and uh, try to mimic that with the egg cartons are these uh, well, real slate yeah. somebody mentioned earlier that their ground their dirt is red um, most of newfoundland soil is red because it has a high concentration of iron oxide in the um in the soil so uh, even the native indians that were here were called the red indians because they they paint their faces with the uh, the red soil mixture, but the stone you can see is very very red here in Newfoundland. Can you repeat your last name? Waterfield. Waterfield. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Wanda. Oh, no problem. Okay. Anybody else? I'm I'm an also I'm also a, a great supporter of egg cartons. Yeah, that, that's a lot of things that can be done with them. Yeah, use them a lot. Right. But it does have to be what I call paper mache type. <laughs> yeah. Not the styrofoam. <laughs> I drive my daughter crazy because I won't buy eggs if they're in, in styrofoam or plastic. Um, but we have we have a, a feed store here that when you go there, you can go in their storeroom and they've got hundreds of uh, the paper egg cartons and you can take as many as you want. Mm. Oh, mm. our feed store sells them. Because I ran out of them and had to buy some. And then after that, everybody started bringing them back. And I'm. <laughs> well, you know, when your chickens lay like crazy, then. Um, I have a, another question. I don't drink coffee, so I don't have a coffee grinder. Does it make any difference if it's a cheap one? Probably not. Um, I, I would think the cheaper the better. Yeah. Good. They have one for, uh, let's see, uh, under $20. Yeah, that's what I have, a cheap one, and it, uh, that's what I use. Uh, I like the seed starter. You can get that this time of year, and you can... Um, grind that up it's fine already but i grind it up more with in a coffee grinder they have one here. oh that's a hand grinder they have an electric one here for 15 dollars yeah is it battery powered uh it says electric oh well i love the idea that was given earlier about the uh autumn leaves and, and grinding them up 
However, I live in the great Northwest where we don't have trees that turn color. And <laughs> yeah, yours are all green, huh? Yeah, I, I'm in the land of evergreen. So if anybody wants to send me a bag <laughs> of autumn leaves, I would be just delighted. Well, it's the wrong time of year now, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, keep me in mind. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you can't always get something because uh, depending on your um, rainfall and um, how just, I mean, we've had some good years and some, some really bad ones. Yeah. It's like yeah, they turn well, if overnight you ever and fall off. send me a, a charity package, that's. Okay, BJ. <laughs> yeah, remind me in the fall and if, if the leaves are good, I'll, I'll gather you some. I but... will, Treble, I will. Yeah. <laughs> By I'm not going to grind that, them that, for you, though. That teacup thing, my sister does um, bonsai. And the minute you brought that out, I thought, oh, gee, I'd like to have that as a gift for my sister. <laughs> that That's a very nice thing you did. How would houseplant leaves work for this? How would what? On that? You know, your houseplants? Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, you can use those, yes. Just when they're dried, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, you know, I have some Morticia Adams plants. <laughs> Just make sure they're genuinely dead <laughs> because my, I don't know if my daughter still has it, but there's a, there is a couple of plants that you can put, put water on them and they go, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> so neat. Those are you've right. never seen that's that right. before. It's so neat. One's called the resurrection plant. Yeah. 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 Hey, any more ideas? So which of these things do you think you want to try? Egg cartons. <laughs> <laughs> Egg cartons can be done. Egg, a lot. They can be made to look like just about anything in in construction. I I like using them for to make um, fireplaces. Yeah. To, mm. to make stonework fireplaces. Um, and there will be a, a one one of the topics monthly will be egg carton masonry. Oh, and, good. All of these done, along neat. with fun foam and paper clay and any other things like Preble's wood filler and <laughs> whatever anyone comes up with, and that's what this uh, is all and about. The wood filler um, could be used the same way I was using the salu clay. Um, I mean, it can be textured. Um, it's maybe more expensive than spackle. I don't know. I haven't bought any lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the first time you talked about sell you play, and I can't remember what the other one was, but as soon as we went offline, or, you know, the, the Zoom ended, I went online and found them and bought them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anytime you mention a product, boy, yeah. I have to go out there and buy it. <laughs> All right, so... Hugh and Jackie. <laughs> okay, this yeah. this is yeah. five pounds. I bought this almost 30 years ago. That's how long. I oh. mean, so don't buy a five pound bag unless you need to do it for a lot of projects because it's going to take you a while because it's so it's it's in a powder. Okay, the sell you clay they, that I got is a one pound brick. Yeah. Okay. I don't even but sell they, them in that the size only, anymore unless it's like teachers. The only dis the only directions they give with it is how to mix the one pound brick. <laughs> oh my gosh. So would you would you like to read to me what the ratio is on there for mixing? Uh, mine doesn't even have anything like that. Oh. There are no instructions on this. <laughs> oh. Um, so okay, so the consistency you want, huh? Well, so he, it's it's a lot of trial and error. Um, I, I don't mind mixing up some more. I got so much of it. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. Clean this out just a minute. That, that's okay. 
I'll just mix it to, you know, whatever. I'm going to experiment. Nope, I'm going to show you. Let me turn my background off. <laughs> but I like your background. <laughs> yeah, but I mean. Pretty background. You can't see. That's one of my projects. But there's a bunny um, back there. Okay. So here's a, a little bitty cup, you know. A little bitty cup, yeah. Okay. I have little bitty cups. And this Nurse, is an even you smaller start? cup. You see, and I don't, I don't even have it full. I mean, it's maybe, maybe half full if I really, really press that down in there. Is that a half cup measure or a quarter cup measure? Um, I'm going to say I probably put a tablespoon in here. Okay. Okay. Measure. Marcia, can you um, spot a uh, preble so we yeah. can see her, please? And let me close that. So, okay. So now I have a cup of water. You see how much water's in there? Yes, ma'am. I see how much water's in there. This is what my husband gave me earlier when I made the earlier stuff. I'm going to barely pour a tiny bit of water in there. Do you see how much went in there? Yeah. I mean, Very like, little. Nothing. I could spit that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then um, I'm just using the end of the paintbrush to mix it. It's going to, it has a lot of uh, dust or something. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of powdery. Uh huh. Looks like it's smoking, but so a lot of times what I do is I'll hold my hand over it as a yeah, good idea. Yeah. So you can see you can see some of it. Wow. Yeah, you can see yeah. it's it's mixing. And I just kind of work that until you know, and then after a little while I can start without having the hand over it okay where i found it in the one brick one pound brick was at uh create for less so mm. i'm gonna tell you that I, I didn't put enough water in this you can always add more but you can't take it out you need, you exactly spit, so I'm, again i'm gonna again. pour a tiny bit of water in there yeah I'll spit <laughs> whoops yeah <laughs> can see it as a but you can kind of see as I'm squishing it some of it's wet some of it's not right and you just keep working it, it you don't don't go oh it's got to it doesn't have enough water in it that's where you end up going wrong right then you have to add more mix yeah, yeah. and just kind of squish it squish it squish it squish it until it's and you know, kind of wrap. It's kind of like making bread dough or something. Um, or oh, dough. It's the consistency you want, and it's all mixed. Um, and you think you was that one filler? With stencils? No, this is um, uh, cellu clay. Oh, no, but okay. do, do you it's think you could building. use it with the stencils? No. I okay. Wouldn't. I would not try it with the do stencil because it's, it does have glue in it. Oh, okay. That's what's that's what you're activating with the water. Um, I guess um, you want it kind of a thick um, clay almost. That's that's my preference. If it's runny, if it you know if you got too much water in it, it will get to this after it dries out a bit. And that's another thing. After it sits a little bit. You can come back and play with it. I mean, I took what we looked at earlier and I thought, you know what, I, why waste it? I'm going to, so I'm going to make it for my, one of my little um, um, advent rooms. And um, somebody mentioned the, the chalk. I have the pastels, so I'm going to get them out and I'm going to use them for once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they come in handy. I just, I don't think about it. Anyways, um, so I think this is pretty mixed. Yeah. But you can see it's kind of clayish. What do you um, use it for, Preble? Um, I use it for a lot of things, but in this particular application, I'm kind of making um, it's I'm great making for dirt, you know, a heel. I'm making a heel with this. 
um, cause it's, you know, micro scale or smaller. Um, but I've used it for a lot of things. Um, I use it in combination with this foam, you know, to fill something, you know, maybe I don't want it to show at all. You know, I'm not, I mean, it's it, cause you can smooth it out once it's dry, especially if you had too much water on it, it's real sticky. Um, or even if it's not too much water, you just like at this point, it's kind of sticky. It's more likely to stick to you than, let me get it out again. So it's kind of like a clay, but as I press on it, see how it's, it's, this is so much smoother than if I just put that out. What color does it dry? Uh... Travel. Oh, it's a it's going to be a light gray. It's going to be basically the same color as what's in your um, bag. So it's it's good for making sidewalks and whatever. Like but yeah, a lot yeah. lots of uses. Um, it paints really well. Um, I will say you'll probably want to do at least two coats, maybe three. Um, and definitely if you put heavy coats, you're gonna cover up some of the texture and and you know you can see how I'm, I'm getting like some ridges I wanted you know it like I said I, I really like cellulose clay the, the the wood filler you can do kind of a similar actually um, once you play with it Thank you. Anyway, so. Thank you, Carol. Is that cellulose clay that you were using? Yeah, this this is cellulose clay that I'm I'm using right now, and. <laughs> it, how do you spell it? Here, I'll just. Preble, how do you spell cellulose clay? Just look there. It's well, on, she's the, gonna on hold your the screen. Oh, I'm on a phone. L L U clay. C E L L U clay. Thank you. Yeah. And um, I paid, <laughs> this was in 95. I paid $18.90 for this bag. And um, I mean, seriously, I, I have used the heck out of it. I probably still have three pounds left. Well, the one pound, I'm, I'm just going to say off the top of my head, because I really don't remember how much it was, but I, I think it was somewhere around $5 for the one pound. And that was just recently. And that'd be enough forever, probably. Yeah, well, one pound would be enough, really. Yeah, especially depending on what scale you're working in. Right. If you're making Barbie doll things, then it might not last <laughs> long. Yeah. I don't know if you can see, let me, let me try this one again. This has started to dry. Yeah. And and can you see how this is a lot wider? Yes, yes. That, that just, you know, those little spots will start to dry. That's why it warps is because of that. It, it you know, the thinner parts are gonna dry first. Um, yeah, it, the, the drying is uneven. Yeah. Yes, it has any. Does it crack? Um, yes. It, it will crack. Not always. Um, a lot just depends on, you know, how thick you put it on and how smushed you made it. So it would smush it, it down it and it's really even, you know, and then you kind of texturize it. It might not crack. Uh, if it's thinner. If it does crack it's easy to patch yes yeah oh yeah you can just put you can put more over the top that's another yeah. thing if you want to do like a thin layer of it and then come back with another layer uh that would be one way that you know it's kind of like the the resin you know do a couple of layers if you really need it thick do a couple of layers and you're less likely to have warping and you won't have as much cracking I really haven't, cracking's not been a problem. Um, a lot of times I have a tendency to uh, paint over it. Um, and, you know, cause rocks are different colors. They are not just one color. No, they're not. 
Thank you, Preble. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you, really helpful. Thank you, everyone who has shown things. Right. Anything else? Any other questions? Uh, I think we're done for the day. <laughs> yeah, just Marcy, just just don't pay attention to that email I sent you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't I seen couldn't it. So. Get, I couldn't find the link to the Zoom meeting. Everything just wanted to go to the calendar, and oh. finally, I don't know how I found it, but I did. Oh, good. Yeah. You hit messages. But the link should have been on the calendar part. Um, no, no, I don't think it is. I think it's just the no. announcement that, you know, when it is and all. Yeah. It is on, on if, you go to, if you go to the create calendar, mm -hmm. the link is there for this meeting. Oh, see, I didn't think it was. I thought it was MCC, so I didn't look. It right. is MCC, but Create is putting MCC things on their calendar too. They put we're Tuesday working, Zoom. We're working and together. This. It's all name, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and also, we're the most active group. I don't understand you. That's funny. I like that. Okay, what are we going to get for the. Um, did, hold on. Did you, uh, the money's on the, wait, the money is on the um, table. Get me okay, any questions? So what is our uh, for next month's meeting on landscaping? What is it? Well, you had to ask that. Oh, you would have to ask that. <laughs> have to go back to the schedule well, and look. It's right in front of you, Marsha. <laughs> it's fine. It's vines. It's vines. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> vines. Vines okay. and trellises. Vines. Vines and trellises and things. Yeah. Okay. That's what I got the paper clay for, is that one house that has a vine up on it. You got paper well, clay for a vine? Well, that's what they call it for. Oh, interesting. I don't know. I've never no. made a vine with paper clay. Okay. But we're not making it till next month. Right. <laughs> You're right. Well, I haven't started the house, so I guess I'm okay. <laughs> I think so. Well, never was, doesn't start till May 9th. And look what's going on. At I know. Everybody's <laughs> half done with, some of them are half done with it already. Really? Well, not you quite. You must not probably. be reading the group. <laughs> I haven't been well, reading all of it because most everybody's had got the same subject and they're talking about way different things. So, well, most of it now is is where to get things. Yeah, okay. and mostly people are just getting their supplies, and yeah. that's what it should and be right now. Yeah, yeah. My my wheels came there. and my wood came, and the illustration board came. And the staircase. And then today I got the um, stuff from Dorothy's doodads, the from she Jackie. put on there for you to cut your your uh, your board. The, the um, measurements are all on there. Tell you how to cut your board in advance of the first class. Right. Yeah. And that's what everyone is doing. And I got to order my windows, I forgot. Well, you need your windows before you can cut your walls. Yeah. Well, it's so, really nice to see in. some of you that I haven't seen for a while. Right. That made it today, and thank you so much. Yeah. And if there's no more- I'm so glad y'all came. Yeah, there's no more um, questions or showing show and tell or anything i will stop the recording if i can figure out how to do that mm -hmm. don't okay. forget don't forget to join marcia on tuesday night escape from quarantine which is we just get on there and work on our minis and chat uh when uh friday nights marcia hosts uh same thing. <laughs> the same thing where we all, you know, people get on and chat and work on their minis. 
and yeah. Wednesday is Debbie Young's round two Wednesday, at the same thing. Wednesday evenings is Debbie Young's round to it where they you get on there and it was it was uh, set up so you could work on round table kits that you've never gotten to or any project. I think some of us last night started on a big project there. So um, what did you guys uh, work on last night? I was going to come and then I figured oh, I better do these income taxes oh, instead. <laughs> well, some of us who have the old Knob Hill kit started it. Oh, no, yeah. I didn't. We decided yeah, several doing Knob Hill and several doing the house on the shoe. <laughs> right. And the shoe house, you know, they're just different things people are working on. And um, biding our time until never was starts. So getting and our stuff together, but not necessarily starting it 